could this be just really the storm, the hurricane, seasonality, uh, food services and drinking uh, sales actually fell uh, most since 2016? Is this a blip, Anastasia? Yeah, I don't see this being a big major change in trend. I do mm -hmm. think that the consumer absolutely is on solid footing here, and we see this in credit card data. The loan growth is absolutely continuing. Just looking through the numbers, you know, some of the weakness that we're seeing in year-over-year -year terms, for example, is on in-vehicle sales and auto dealers, mm -hmm. and that is not at all a surprise mm -hmm. to us. So anything that is going to be interesting interest rate sensitive, whether it's housing, whether it's autos, we would expect to see weakness there. But outside of that, I think there's broad strength uh, by category though, that I'm seeing. Uh, and then on top of that, the Empire State Manufacturing being on top of expectations is also a positive development. So, Lori, where do you see the U.S. consumer right now? So, we, we generally think it's pretty steady state, but I do think people are going to be, investors are going to be very sensitive to any kind of cracks in demand. So, we do need to keep an eye on this. Good news overall, I think, but again, it's, it's telling me we need to stay vigilant. And so, Lori, how do you reconcile uh, growth that seems solid with the weakness in the housing and auto sector? Like, how do you look at that? So, you know, when you read through the home builder transcripts or listen to the earnings calls, I mean, they're, they're, they're full of a lot of excuses and they're full of a lot of good reasons um, but I think those of us who you know sort of lived through the the financial crisis you know we, we heard a lot of excuses heading into that we heard a lot of good reasons that didn't pan out so you know we're again we're keeping an eye on it um, Anastasia when we talk about uh, housing we think about interest rates yeah. particularly and to what extent is that shoot up pretty dramatic shoot up actually in the 10 year last week will, will that reflect through to the consumer at some point I think it's starting to. I mean, the 30-year mortgage rates is just shy of 5%. So, you know, that's a significant run-up that we've seen in the last couple of years. And then on top of that, you couple that with home prices, which are above their 2007 peaks. So that's making it a little bit more challenging from the consumer standpoint. From the builder standpoint, what we're hearing is that lots are increasingly expensive. So, uh, so it's difficult to buy a lot, build on it, and then expect to sell it to a consumer when rates are rising as much as they are. So I do think that slowdown in housing because of that is starting. So, so we had a $1.5 trillion in, in, insertion of fiscal stimulus into this economy, Anastasia. Yeah. What comes next? What's going to take the place of that? Well, that's a very good question, and I think the jury is still out. And, you know, getting back to earnings, I would say what this fiscal stimulus has done is it's masked a lot of the pressures that are starting to build for corporate margins. So, for example, tariff is one issue, interest rates is another issue, uh, input costs are rising as well, and all of that has been masked so far by the drop in corporate interest rate. I don't know what there is to replace that in 2019, and that's one of the reasons why we're looking for a more cautious tilt in U.S. Equities and broadly.